Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, we've got the information. She's not an Ogren. <laughs> we were predicting she was going to be an Ogren because it's a High Mother mod. It sounds like an Ogren, but it's Sacred Order. This is the new legendary champion that you can get from the Fragment Exchange. We've got the full details on her now today. So we talked about this in yesterday's video. Basically, you're going to be able to take old fragments, right, from previous fusions or events. So let's say... Uh, Wuji was a previous fusion epic. I've got 55 fragments for her. I will be able to turn those into exchange points and can use exchange points then to buy fragment exchange chests. And those chests can contain the fragments for mod. We're still not sure how many fragments for mod will be in each chest, how many you'll have to open. We did have some speculation in yesterday's video, but this video is about mod and her, her toolkit. Let's move me over to this side, shall we? get out of the way. I, I think, you know, visually she looks super cool, fantastic. She is a force affinity support for uh, the Sacred Order. She is legendary. And let me tell you straight up, guys, she's looking really solid. She is an AoE reviver, so this becomes pretty big, right? AoE reviver in force affinity is always nice to have. Of course, we got Pythion, who's also a cleanser. So that's sort of like the competition she'd be up against, shall we say. So let's take a look at what she can do. Blessed Spear, her A1, attacks one enemy, has a 50, booking to 70% chance of putting decreased attack for two turns, and an 80 going to 100% chance of putting increased attack on the ally with the highest attack for one turn. I actually do kind of like that, right? It can be a little bit tricky, you know, uh, to get increased attack into your team, like in live arena especially. An extra little source of increased attack, that's kind of nice, and the decreased attack single target is... Pretty big for things like Demon Lord, for any of the basically any single boss encounter. If you're playing on manual, it'd be quite good for Hydra as well, because you could put decrease attack on Head of Wrath, which is pretty much the only one that matters to get decrease attack on anyway, but that would be more manual type play. But that's still pretty cool. And I get actually nice little Hydra skill having her, let's say, with an Inquisitor Shamale on the team, right? You might not have increased attack. Well, she gives it to you. Pretty nifty. Anointed Phalanx, her A2, four books to a three turn cooldown, attacks all enemies, has a 75 booking to 100% chance of decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns, then increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn, and heals all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. Well, that seems extremely good. Let's be real. You're very likely to be building this champion with lots of HP because she is a reviver, right? You build them big and tanky that's how you do it um decreasing enemy buff duration by two turns most of the time that is going to strip off all the enemy buffs you know occasionally or with masteries they might be three turns but it's much more common for buffs to be two turns or less that's pretty big because you're decreasing duration that does not proc polymorph right removing or stripping buffs very specific technical things or stealing buffs that will proc polymorph but decreasing the duration of buffs does not. So that's, for example, uh, what Timot the Fool is good at. I, I found it very funny with Timot the Fool. People are saying, he counters stone skin. It's like, nope, no, nope, doesn't counter stone skin. There's still the 50-50 there. Not any better doing that than anyone else, but very good into polymorph because decreasing buff duration doesn't interact with polymorph. So that's, that's great. So yeah, look, I mean, three turn cooldown. It's an AOE attack. It's kind of nifty as well. It's going to be a decent heal. With ally buff extension, that by itself is a great move. Then you add in two turn enemy buff deplete. Really strong move. That's a great move. Psalm of Revival. Six books to a four turn cooldown. Revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. If an ally's defense is equal to or higher than an attack, puts 60% increased defense for two turns. If their attack is higher than defense, 50% increased attack for two turns instead. Look, it's a four turn cooldown AOE revive. Um, it, it's not the strongest revive in the world, right? Like the strongest revives in the game are kind of like Thiefy and Marishka, specifically for Arena because they bring you back with so much turn meter. Uh, so you can actually get a turn and you're not going to get killed. Uh, Duchess's revive, for instance, um, is also fairly decent because at least it brings people back under Veil, so they're somewhat protected. Um, and then like, I, I'd say even a Pythion revive is, is a decent chunk lower. It brings you back with strength then. But I think, I think it's the same, but with Strengthen. Uh, let's double check that. So if we go over to Pythion, uh, I believe it is the same. Yeah, half HP, turn meter, and Strengthen. 
on a four turn. Now he also gives you a little, little bit of damage reduction. So you're technically getting like 25% damage reduction from strengthen and 5% from overlay. So Pythion's going to bring you back in like, and he's going to keep you alive a little bit better, but it's a good revive, right? That's a great solid revive. Increased defense will help you to live. Increased attack will help you to do damage. I mean, for defense-based damage dealers, it's going to give them a damage buff straight up as well. So I think it's kind of a, a fairly potent offensive revive. Like, it's it's pretty solid. It's kind of what you would expect. But it's not like a crazy S-tier revive uh, along the lines of, of Mariska or CP. Because again, like Mariska, I think, brings people back with 75%, which is just nuts. Yeah, 75% turn meter. Like, that's such a big deal. Or then CP brings you back with like full turn meter, which is a huge deal as well. But still really good. Shining Evensong, her passive, remove one random debuff from all allies at the start of this champion's turn. Puts a continuous heal buff on the ally with the lowest HP for one turn at the end of this champion's turn. That's kind of interesting. And then the 60 accuracy in all battles aura, so nice versatile aura. Uh, so she, for slight, you know, counter synergy, I suppose. She cannot extend really her own continuous heal, right? The continuous heal will go out after she does anointed phalanx. Now you might get a two turn continuous heal with, uh, or someone else could buff extend them. That's always possible. You could have another buff extender or with the, the, the mastery that gives you a chance to extend buffs. Maybe you'll have a bit longer and you might extend some of them, but there's not too much of a synergy there, not a massive synergy, but a really strong passive as well. Cleansing a debuff at the start of her turn, very, very strong, just constantly pulsing, healing, uh, not healing, constantly pulsing, cleansing. It is very reminiscent of two Hanarak. One of the strongest things about her, inviolable, remove one random debuff from all allies at the start of her turn. Two random debuffs are removed from allies when a continuous heal. So two Hanarak is in theory a little bit better at it. Um, two Hanarak also puts out continuous heals with her A1, right? So you get some uh, synergy there, but I mean... <laughs> Hi, Mother Maud. She is in contention. I mean, certainly compare her to Doom Priest, to Hanrak's Avoid Legendary. Like, I don't have her difficult to get. Doom Priest is another great option. Um, and yeah, she's just better than Doom Priest, really, removing one random debuff at the start of the turn. It's such a strong passive. Uh, Doom Priest is a little bit of healing. Maud is going to be doing quite a bit more than that with her A2 and doing this continuous heal. is going to be nice. So yeah, look, there you go. Hi, Mother Maud. Uh, I saw a lot of people saying like, man, you know, this fragment exchange thing, they're probably going to suck. I think now that we see her kit, she definitely doesn't suck. No way. Maud actually looks really solid. Let me know what you think about this champion. I think this champion is a very attractive addition to most players' toolkits, right? Like, yeah, if you're, if you're really lucky and or massive spender and you've got a bunch of these absolutely S-tier revivers and supports, uh, for like Tag Arena, Hydra, all, all you know, Cursed City now especially is what's going to be great for that. I think she's going to be fantastic everywhere. The big question is how obtainable is she? Like we worked it out in my video yesterday. I've got I've got about you know almost forty fragment exchange chests, um, uh, good to go. So yeah, it's really going to depend how frequently you get these fragments, right? I've been playing for three years. You know, I don't know. Are they going to up the amount of fragments? I mean, that's the big question. Will they up the amount of fragments you can get from fusions so that you can get these exchange chests? Like, will they have more catch-up events? I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, so hopefully she is obtainable. Certainly some of you in the comments, from what you guys are saying, like, dear Lord, you guys have a lot. <laughs> you guys have a lot of fragments saved up, some of you. You guys are absolutely insane. Um... Yeah, if you failed any fragment fusions before and you have lots of legendary fragments in particular, you're going to be able to open lots of chests and uh, get this champion pretty soon. Yeah, she seems really good. Yeah, really, really good. She looks very strong. Uh, seems like a strong contender for like slap her in a big old bolster set or something like that and have her just like being tanky in arena. Probably, you do need to get her with some accuracy. It's the only awkward thing to do the the debuff decrease and the decrease attack. It's probably like get her with like 400 accuracy or something uh, so that she's good and solid for all the PvE content and still effective enough in arena, certainly against their their damage dealers, anyone not building resistance. Then you just build her as fast and as, as high HP probably as possible. I think she's going to be great. There you go. That is High Mother Mod. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll see you all next time. Bye.